Isang mapagpala at magandang unang araw ng Hunyo 2021 at welcome po sa Tuesday edition ng The Stock Market Today. Ito po ang inyong lingkod, Benji Chidoro. Ako po ay isang retired bank officer na nagsimula mag-invest sa Philippine Stock Market noong 2007. And uh, I do this report daily which I started August of last year. I also report the latest news on your favorite and most active stocks. And if you like the content, I invite you to subscribe to my channel. And if you have uh, stocks in mind that you want reviewed, please comment on the comment box and I will prioritize. Ngayon po ay ang uh, listing date ng Mondanisen. Kaya Mondanisen po ang ating balita. At uh, yung manipis na power supply sa ating Luzon grid. Ngayong araw, at ang resulta ng trading sa ating Philippine Stock Exchange, June 1, 2021, dito lamang sa The Stock Market Today. From the business world, Red Alert raced for Luzon Grid. The National Grid Corporation of the Philippines raced red and yellow alerts over the Luzon Grid Monday as demand peaked following a rise in temperatures over the weekend. The system operator said on Viber that it placed the grid on yellow alert between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. Monday, moving to a red alert from 1 p.m. onwards. The yellow alert is issued when reserves fall below ideal levels. A red alert is declared if the supply-demand balance deteriorates further to a point where power interruptions must be resorted to. We have a protected or projected system peak demand of 11,514 megawatts and our available capacity for today is about 11,729 megawatts. The difference is small, a little over 200 megawatts. That's really a concern. Mario C. Marasigan, Department of Energy's Electric Power Industry Management Bureau Director said during a briefing. He also noted that the rise in the heat index over the weekend, the government weather service reported that Aparica Gayan posted a reading of 46 degrees Celsius on the index on May 30. Wow, talagang napakainit. As a rule of thumb, an estimated 100 megawatts must be allotted for every degree increase in temperature. Mr. Marasigan said. He added that the unplanned or forced outages accounted for 1,285 megawatts of unavailable capacity Monday. Siguro may nag-down na generator. No? Manila Electric Company said areas affected by manual load dropping or rotational power cuts include parts of Bulacan, Cavite, Laguna, Metro Manila, Quezon, and Rizal. Rotational outages are due to last less than an hour, Energy Secretary Felix William B. Fontabella said Monday. At 4 p.m., Meralco said power has been restored, restored in all affected area or areas. Talagang hindi ka maka-survive dito sa init kung hindi ka mag aircon And um, kagabi nga, talagang ubod ng init we have to turn on the aircon. Kasi sa gabi lang po kami nag aircon Pero sa umaga at hapon, tinitiis po namin. Sa gabi lang po talaga para makatulog lang. Gusto rin namin na makakontribute sa, sa grid. Ano? So, power saving din po tayo. Saving energy. Okay, so let's take a look at what happened to the Philippine Stock Exchange today. Tingnan po natin ang nangyari. Tingin ko po ay sideways movement or flat. I think it's a sideways or flat movement. Oh, it is a flat movement. Actually, it lost uh, 1.06 points or just 0.02%. So, essentially, it is flat or basically it's flat. 
And yung um, surge niya noong 2 days ago or 3 days ago, noong May 28, ay patuloy na nagko-consolidate. Pero, ang maganda po dito sa movement ngayon sa PSE, although it is flat, there is volume. More than above average. So, ang tingi ko po dyan, bukas, ay tataas ang index dahil meron siyang volume dito eh. Although maliit lang yung green candlestick natin ngayon and magandang pangitain po yung volume ng PSEI today. I'm, I'm speaking of the index. So it ended flat to end at 6627.43, losing 1.06 point. Konting konti lang. Pero the good news is there's net foreign buying of 341.37 million and there is volume today in today's trading in the index. Yung ating market summary naman, tignan naman, tignan naman po natin ang nangyari today. So, market activity, 101 companies declined, 107 advanced, while 41 remained unchanged. The all share index, however, showed a positive or a positive sign of 0.01% or 0.07%. 47 points up. So, flat talaga ang index. 1.06 down dito. Pero all share index is up. Pero essentially, it is flat. Now, the financials and the properties posted a green result with the properties or with the financials gaining 1.11% while properties gained 1.57% percent. The rest, the holding companies, industrials, mining, and services were down. The decliners was led by mining at 1.75 percent. On the market status, we will be reviewing the top 10. Monde Nissen, I, um, listing date po niya today. BDO, Ali, CNPF, AC, JFC, Pure Gold, URC, BPI, and SMPH. Now, before we go to Mondanisen, or, okay, sige, tingnan na natin si Mondanisen. Monde yung kanyang short name. Okay, so it opened at 1348. Actually, 1350 po yung kanyang list, listing price. Ano? So it went as high as 1356 and as low as 1346 with net foreign buying at 6.06 .06 million. Now, I cannot uh, do a technical analysis here because this is just one data. Wala pa po tayong data at iisa lang po yung ating result. Pero, meron po tayong uh, balita on Mondanisen. Ang sabi niya dito, Mondanisen's or Mondanisen bets Americans will dig Corn's alternative chicken. So they're going for alternative foods, huh? the healthy lifestyle. Mondanis and Corp will use some of its $1 billion initial public offering proceeds to expand its Corn Foods Limited fake meat business in the U.S., the world's biggest market by far for plant-based alter alternative food. The Philippines-based company, which also sells staples food, or staple foods that is the owner of Lucky Me Instant Noodles will use corn substitute chicken product to take on heavyweights like Beyond Meat Inc. and Impossible Foods Inc. in a sector dominated by Fox Beef, executive said in an interview. Our ambition is to become the king of alternative chicken globally. Oh, this is alternative chicken meat. Corn Chief Executive Officer Marco Bertaka told Bloomberg before Monday's IPO's IPO, the largest ever for a Southeast Asian food company. Monte debuted in the Philippines on Tuesday, which is today, trading a little or trading little changed at 1350 as of 1052 a.m. Monday plans to increase corn production capacity and ship to more fast food chains in the U.S., spending nearly $16 billion or $335 million to expand its presence in the country. It is also building two 
fermenters or fermenters and packaging facilities in the UK where corn is based and has a 28% market share. Barclays or Barclays PLC estimates the global alternative meat market will grow tenfold to more than 140 billion by 2029. So it's betting on the on the alternative meat, no? alternative chicken, or 10% of the meat industries as a whole. So that's our news. And hopefully, Simon Denise and I mag uh, take off. Ano? But uh, ito, parang flat din ang kanyang katapusan today. So let's now take a look at BDO will be our next stock. Okay, BDO continues to move upwards and it is now bullish with RSI at 57.25. So na reach na po dyan yung kanyang resistance level at 106. Yan, resistance level na po yung 105.80. So if we will uh, base this on historical, on how it performed historically, masasabi natin na si BDO ay nagmo-move lang between 100 and 106. Yan po yung kanyang movement. Kung yan po ay uh, magpapatuloy, I expect a rejection here in the resistance area of one, the 106 level and it will go down back to the 100. Okay, after BDO, Ali. Okay, Ali bounced from uh, an opening of 33.90. It gained 60 centavos to end at 35. But in general, it is still, well, bullish to sideways. RSI is bullish at 63. Pero from the looks of it, well, more on the bullish side. Since the closing price is already above our three main indicators, the 30 or the 20, the 50, and the 100 day exponential moving average. And then after Ali, CNPF. Okay, CNPF is consolidating. So, na reach na niya yung high of 24. Dito nag open siya 2450, but it is now consolidating. Pero ano, uh, based on fundamentals, um, target price natin for CNPF will be 24. So, nung nag-reach nag na siya ng 24, nag-out na po ko dito. Dahil I feel that the stock may just consolidate at this level. However, kung, kung magpatuloy siya sa pagtaas, then tingnan po natin yung weekly chart niya. This is the highest already. This is the highest already, the 52-week high of 24.50. Hindi ko na po pwedeng may project dahil very thin po yung ating information because that is already the highest. And tingin ko magko-consolidate lang yan unless it further goes up and makes another higher high. And then after CNPF, Ayala Corporation. Okay, Ayala Corporation just uh, consolidating in a pullback mood. And it lost uh, 14 pesos from yesterday's gain of 15 pesos. Net of 1 peso gain pa rin siya. Pero it's still above our main indicators. And hence, I would say that Ayala Corporation is bullish. It's now on a pullback or just a co-consolidate. And then JFC. Okay, JFC also consolidating. It lost uh, 4 pesos and 40 centavos at 188.50. However, the next resistance level ni JFC, I see it here at uh, 109 to 110. Yan po yung next resistance level ni, or sorry, 209 to 210 is the next resistance level for JFC. Then, pure gold. Pure gold, think on the consolidate. Oops, it uh, continues to move downwards. It is now still bullish since uh, the closing price is still above the 20 and the 50 day exponential moving average. But in general, it is uh, sideways. Sideways po ang kanyang 
movement. In the meantime, the next resistance level is here at 41. The next support level for pure gold would be here at uh, 3630 to 3640. After pure gold, URC. URC continues to decline, losing 3 pesos. Well, um, it is still bullish since the closing price is still above the candlestick. Maaring nagpo-pullback lang siya. However, kung bumaba siya, kasi I would place the support level here at the EMA 100, yung 135.53. Yan po yung support level niya. Kung mag-bounce siya dyan, then well and good. So, abangan po natin sa susunod, but right now it is still bullish and uh, I expect a bounce here at the EMA 100, yung 135.50 to 135.60 level. And then BPI, tumaas ang mga financials ngayon. Okay, BPI gained 30 centavos, but the stock is... Uh, Shall we say it is moving, um, it is consolidating or it is at a pullback. Meron po siyang dividend of 90 centavos per share with the X date at uh, last Friday pa. Then BPI, finally we have SMPH. Okay, SMPH also in a pullback gaining 60 pesos. So nasa level lang po ng uh, 36 to 37 pesos po yung kanyang movement. The next resistance level would be here at 38.50 to 38.60. While let's play support at EMA 100. That's 35.25. So that's it for SMPH. Yan po ang ating report sa ating stock market. June 1, umpisa na naman ng isang buwan. 2021, this is Benji Chidoro reminding you, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. Maraming salamat sa inyong pagtangkilik. Hanggang sa muli, God bless and bye for now.